watch against the devil's snares, lest asleep he find you. For indeed no pains he snares to deceive and blind you. Satan's prey oft are they who secure our sleeping, and no watch are keeping. For our daily prayer, we use the Order of Morning Prayer, found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book, or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. 
And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him, and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him, But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him, with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away, naked. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Jeff Hemmer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They all left him and fled. Everyone ran away. The scene is ugly all around. Sleeping apostles, Jesus, praying and sweating drops of blood, a turncoat traitor with a kiss of betrayal, the temple guard and a murderous band with swords and clubs to arrest the Prince of Peace, a futile attempt to free Jesus, but in the end, All the faithful fled, and the Son of God is so left surrounded by a bloodthirsty mob. It's nice to think that you'd be a hero, though, right? You wouldn't flee. Let these disciples turn cowards, tuck tails, and run away. Were you there, you would have defended Jesus to the death. Even if we must die with you, we will never leave you. They all left him and fled. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You would have fled, too, if you're honest. If your worship attendance is any indication, where a soccer game or a snooze button can keep you from the presence of Jesus in his service, where your irritation with fellow Christians can send you away in a huff, where being on the losing side of whatever voters' assembly tiff can send you down the street to the next church, or barring that to the brunch counter, you should probably admit you'd have fled, too. When the going gets tough, or inconvenient, or just mundane, the tough get going. They all left him and fled. But this is all according to plan. Jesus needs no defenders. He must be alone. No one can face this trial with him. No one can defend him. No one can rescue him. Put your sword back in its place. Go ahead. Run away. Jesus doesn't need a hero. He needs you to leave him for dead. This is the plan. Alone and abandoned, betrayed and bound, deserted and denied, It's Jesus against the world, or more precisely, the world against Jesus, cosmos against her creator, men against a God who had become man. They all left him and fled. No one comes to Jesus. When he hangs upon the cross, he is no beautiful savior whose fairness will draw you in. He is ugly, hated, despised, and completely alone, forsaken even by the Father, they all left him and fled for you. 
you flee to save your own skin. But Jesus stays to do the same. Every detail in this divine drama is moving toward this single moment. God will die for you. He was alone so that you might have an eternal communion, the community of his saints. He was abandoned so that he might reconcile you to the Father. His disciples fled so that he might find them on the eve of his resurrection and send them to you with his forgiveness on their lips. Jesus doesn't need you to stay with him or come to him. He will draw his elect. He will gather you who fled and join you together in the one bloodthirsty mob of his church, to forgive your flight, to slake your thirst with drafts from his chalice, to dispel your fear, and to promise never to leave you, never to flee from you, no matter who you are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you suffered the agony of drinking from the cup of your Father's wrath against our sin, being betrayed by a kiss from one of your own. Give us strength to remain awake as we now wait and watch for your coming again, knowing that the Father's wrath against us has been satisfied by your bloody death and vindicating resurrection. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.